Welcome back to another episode of the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. As you know, and I've stated before, I am your hostess, Carrie Z. A couple of quick things that I wanted to mention before we jump into this absolutely hilarious episode. First off, as you know, Spy Point is one of my biggest sponsors here at the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. And they are running a super cool contest this month in November. It's really easy to enter. You can win like $500 worth of stuff. So you just have to follow Spy Point on Instagram. You can share any kind of a hunting photo on Instagram. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's hunting related, you will tag Spy Point Camera in that post and use the hashtag YISpyPoint. It doesn't matter if you have tons of Spy Point cameras or none or would just like to win $500 worth of swag. So... Um, that's super fun. And secondly, I hope to see you up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the weekend of December 8th through the 10th for the Wisconsin Ice Fishing Expo. I will be in booth 201. I'll be right across the way from the Ion Ice Fishing booth, which is super exciting because I love their augers. I have partnered with the Lake of the Woods Tourism Bureau, and we're putting together an ice fishing package for one lucky winner at the expo. You'll have to come. You'll just sign up for the newsletter. It'll be super simple. Just come to the booth. I'll have a form. You put in your email address. You check the box. Hit subscribe. And you are automatically entered into the giveaway. I'll have more details by December 1st. So be sure to subscribe to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast on all of your podcast platforms. Because we're going to have great details about the giveaway the first week of December. I'll, of course, be promoting it, and um, we're going to do some interviews with the resort that has chosen to partner with us at the Expo. Just come to the booth, you sign up, and then April 1st, we are going to do a Facebook Live event to draw the winner. So you have about four months there because I'll be promoting it not only at the Wisconsin Ice Fishing Expo, but also at the Open Season Sportsman's Expo in March. So you will technically have two chances to enter if you don't make it up to Oshkosh. But I hope to see you there. I think it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Who doesn't love ice fishing? We're gearing up for the season. The season's coming up. Everybody's getting excited. I know I'm in like deer hunting mode, but ice fishing is never far from my brain. So I hope to see you there at the Wisconsin Ice Fishing Expo, December 8th through the 10th at the Sunny View Expo Center in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Booth 201. Okay. Enough, enough, enough. On to the show. Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. I am your hostess, Carrie Z. Super excited about this week. I know I say that every time. And I know I say that I say that every time. But this week, I really am super excited because I've got good friend Pat Kelmerton on the line. And Pat is an awesome dude. He's a Wisconsinite. He's a lot of fun to be around. He is the owner of Wolf Pack Adventures and Pat Kelmerton Outdoors, and a whole bunch of other things. And I'm super excited to catch up with him after the Association of Great Lakes Outdoor Writers Conference two weeks ago. So, Pat, welcome to the show. Well, hello, hello. Is this the first time you've been you on the show? I appreciate you having me. Wait, is this the first time? It is the first time. Oh, so it is sorry. the first time. I was, I was kind of wondering if I just wasn't cool enough or if I did something wrong or, you know, oh. I, I, get, I get it, you know. Sometimes friend. it's just... Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes it's one of them things where if you're really good friends with people, you just don't even think about it. Right? And you're like, how could I overlook that for so long? Literally. Well, listeners, you are in for a treat because Pat is a hoot. I so. have a very good feeling that you'll be hearing a lot more of me now that Carrie actually <laughs> thought about me one time. I know. Oh, my God. So, so hello, good. everybody. I, I, I'm glad to be with you. <laughs> well, why don't you give – so – and I've done, so I've been on the charter with you guys before, salmon fishing. You've taken me turkey hunting through Wolfpack Adventures and stuff. Let's start there. Let's tell the listeners a little bit about Wolfpack Adventures and Pat Kelmerton Outdoors. And then you have something with kids going on, too, if I don't. Oh, man, it's not fair. Don't ask my wife. Yeah, don't ask my wife what I'm all into because that'll just annoy her and <laughs> irritate her because I'm constantly gone. So, uh yeah, long story short, Wolfpack Adventures is a four-season outdoor adventure program. So uh, we're an entertainment business. We're we're not that type of people that, you know, if you want to fish, go to the store to buy it. You know, it's one of them things where it would be a lot easier for everybody just to do that. If you're going to call me and what your 
uh, full intentions is is the constant uh, fill the freezer and have a great time. I'm not your service. I'm there for entertainment. I'm there to have a good time. We catch a lot of fish, by the way, but uh, I like to I like to share exactly what we do, how we do it, where we're going to do it, and that way. Uh, if I am full then next time that you call, you can certainly go do it yourself or you can teach it to somebody else as well. So, um, Wolfpack Adventures, we have a, we have three salmon boats out on the bay, you know, out on Lake Michigan, out of Sheboygan. We have a, a couple of boats up at the Bay of Green Bay that we chase walleyes. We have a couple of boats inland that we go and bobber down fishy on for panfish or if you want to go and, and soak a bobber for a bass, I don't care what we do. As long as we're outside doing it, I'm a happy boy. Um, cool. We got that stuff. We have a fully enclosed trailer with 50 pair of waders and fly rods and spin cast rods and center pin rods for, uh, um, for fishing the tributaries to Lake Michigan during the spring and the fall, you know, standing in the river and letting that, uh, that mist come up off of the the water that's warmer than the air temperature and the geese are flying around and making noises and you got the things of the, the golf course going off down at Black Wolf Run and Whistling Straits and, you know, we have corporate memberships down there that we are allowed to fish the tributaries to uh, Lake Michigan and things like that. We do ice fishing down in the tributaries to Lake Michigan being either the Sheboygan Pigeon or the uh, the ports of being Sheboygan, Manitowoc, Two Rivers, uh, Port Washington, Milwaukee, depending on where the bite is the best. We are mobile enough that we do not call one port home for ice fishing because that changes daily. Uh, you know, we do inland fishing. We have our, our private ponds that we can take people out to trout fishing and going through the whole um trout hatchery process if you want to know that we have man inland fishing for for panfish we do turkey hunts we do waterfall hunts we do we're a four season outdoor adventure program that uh we have a lot of employees that have become family and close friends and you know, we just, uh, we enjoy the sunshine. We enjoy the wind in our face and having a good time and you never, really know what we're going to do but we have enough people that we're not going to get burnt out and get crabby doing it so i was just going to life ask, is good i was just going to ask that's so much stuff how many people do you have working with you uh we got about 15 so wow. as, as far as the full-time employees you know we have a bunch of captains because you have to be a, a captain to, to guide up on the bay of green bay or lake winnebago or you know or lake michigan itself so you have to be a captain either you um, a six pack or a master captain. We got both part of our, our family. We have local guides that are able and willing to take the inland stuff as far as if you have time and you want to go and, and try your luck on Lake Winnebago for perch right now, you know, the fishing is fantastic. We, I also live over, you know, by the Wisconsin river and Mississippi river. We can do that too. I, I, fish those a lot now is that something that i promote i don't because it's one of them where there's people that are better than i out there you know it's one of them where um going back to the whole thing we are an entertainment business we we like to have fun we are uh we hang our hats at the end of the day on the hook knowing that we made memories and good friends and you know there's a thousand People that are better sticks out there than us, but hey, we're, we're, we're going to catch plenty of fish. We're going to win some tournaments. We're going to have fun doing it. So That's cool. That is super yeah. cool. Do you have a favorite thing that you like to do, whether it's turkey hunting or salmon fishing or whatever it is? Do you have one that just one species you just love to chase more than any other ones? Absolutely. Hands down, 100%. I know that... Um, I enjoy doing different things in different seasons. <laughs> so, it, you know, it, 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 to answer your question, yes, but no, because I'm going to get bored on it. In my ADHD, yeah. I'm like a squirrel on a branch with a river running under it with nowhere to jump. So, 
Uh, what it is, uh, when it comes down to the fishing, all right, we'll start in January. How about okay. that? <laughs> so January, my absolute favorite thing to do in January, hands down, no doubt about it, is probably trout fishing in the Milwaukee Harbor because you got the hustle and bustle of the world behind you, the horns and the sirens of the um you know, the emergency personnel that are running to save somebody's life. And here I am listening to the waves slap against the rocks and the seagulls going crazy. And uh, the drag is screaming with the 20 pound German brown trout. There's something incredibly special about that fishery that will make you sit back and go, this is just awesome because I'm, I'm right next to the Summerfest grounds where a couple of months ago I was listening to bands and drinking beer. And now I'm out here and the whole world is stopped for myself, but the world is going 100% behind me. So that's, that's so really cool. That's crazy because most people think of January, they're immediately thinking of, you know, ice fishing up north or anything, I guess. Well, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of people out there fishing, but it just never would have occurred to me to go down like towards the harbor. But that does make sense. Because that's technically early ice down there. Yeah. December, the, the the harbors, you know, Lake Michigan becomes a great big slushy. So you have to be behind yeah. the rocks and you have to give it enough time to have safe ice. Because I made the commitment a long time ago, no matter if I'm charter fishing, walleye fishing, salmon fishing, ice fishing, I don't care. I am not going to put myself or my clientele in the position of any danger. I will not be that person that at some point has to call somebody's family because I made a bad decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a fish is not worth it. You can go to the store and buy a fish every single day of every single week. That is not the reason that you're going fishing. Hands down, it is not. You can, I have had customers call me constantly saying, are we going to get our limit? Well, you might with somebody else, but not with me. Right. No, because I'm not going to take you. If that is the sole purpose that you're coming fishing with me is to get your limit of fish, I'm not your service. You know, and uh, don't get me wrong. We limit out all the time or mm -hmm. we could limit out all the time. You know, if I'm if I'm pan fishing, if I'm bluegill fishing and you have a group of 10 people, I'm not going to go until we get our limit. There's no reason to go until we get our limit. You know, let's say five fish is going to give you 10 fillets and they're all eight inch bluegills. That's a hell of a meal. Yeah. There's no reason to fill your freezer and have them get freezer burned and have that waste of resource that you're going to end up throwing away in a couple of months because you forgot that you have them in your freezer. Give yourself a reason to go fishing. If you have no fish in the freezer and you want to have a fish fry, that gives you that reason to go fishing. Then you have to go catch fish to have that fish fry. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I'm not opposed to somebody taking their limit of fish or I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I'm not. But I am 100% in agreement of, you know, that 10 fish, pan fish limit. That, that's my belief. I, I just... That's twenty fillets. If they're good sized panfish, that's that's a heck, that's a great meal, you know. Yeah. So, anywho, I, I get sidetracked. I'm sorry. Again, okay. going back to my no, ADHD. It's okay. it's okay. So we cover January. <laughs> oh God! You know this is yeah, only a they, thirty minute show, right? <laughs> oh, thirty minutes! Oh man! Oh my God! I'm gonna have a part two and a part three. Does, does it really have to be thirty minutes? Can we go longer? <laughs> yes. Oh, we're, we're in trouble. To part two. <laughs> All right, so in February, here we are in February. I mean, we made it through January. We caught a bunch of brown trout and having a good time over in Milwaukee. Now I'm in February. And uh, February, I'm going to be probably chasing a lot of bluegills and stuff like that through the ice. Uh, some crappies, the suspended crappies out in the basins. And, you know, the, the dead of winter where everything gets cold, that things normally start slowing down, but not really because the fishing is pretty there. You get into the March, you know, in the March, now I'm out in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. I'm chasing those jumbo perch. And, um, you know, all those fish are starting to transition into getting into the shallower, um, getting into the spawning. I'm going to be chasing those jumbo perch up in March. Um, my destination is going to be Devil's Lake. You know, it's just I've had the most luck out there. I love that area, and that's where I'm going to be. 
And then you get into uh, late March, and I'm going to try to find some trophy pike on tip-up somewhere. So I'm either going to be up at Lake of the Woods, I'm going to be over on, um, you know, I, I I was just talking to Paul and Brandy over at River Bend, and we were talking yeah. about coming up and trying to do a um, monster pike piece, you know, getting Jim Edlin and, and get some story content of catching those those pike all mostly catch and release all you know targeting nothing but those 40 40 inch and bigger pike through the ice you know the coming up and getting ready to spawn and stuff like that and there is no better destination in lake of the woods for buffalo bay and rainy river rainy lake for that kind of fishery devil's lake you know the pike has been hard to find the last couple of years but before that they were pushing around you got the shipping canals in Sturgeon Bay that is good for pike. You got, you know, some of the uh, lower bay is good for pike. But, you know, that's where you're going to find me. I'm going to be up at Lake of the Woods. I'm going to be up and staying at Paul and Brandy's place chasing those. And then you get into uh, April. You know, April, I'm I'm gearing up. I'm I'm going turkey hunting. I'm, I'm chasing those thunder chickens late April, early May. Um, you know, I, I also, that time of year is when I'm going to be not only chasing thunder chickens, but I'm also going to be chasing, you know, the, the perch over on like Mississippi river. Um, I'm going to be going up to Lynxville, Victory, Stoddard, DeSoto, you know, hitting the, uh, Mississippi river for the perch and, and chasing those, uh, those turkeys over in Crawford County, Iowa County. You know, that area transitioning also into the wing dams for walleyes, pitching, you know, the teca minnows and the blade baits and stuff like that up on the on the wing dams. And then we get into June. June is no better time than chasing those big old silver, you know, steelhead or rainbow trout when they're in the river, they're steelhead and they're on the lake rainbow trout, you know, I did not forget about the steelhead in the river system that I'm going to chase, you know, that late February, March, but it's not my favorite. You know, mm-hmm. they, don't get me wrong. People that fly fish, that is a destination that mm-hmm. you have got to go to to chase those steelhead up in the river system. And we do extremely well. And we probably, we, we'll probably guide 1,500 people doing that. That's not my favorite. You asked me what my favorite was. But that is a hell of a destination to go to. But my favorite is going to be over on the river. It's just something about the bluffs and the perch. And I'm a panfish guy. My my kids love fishing. I love taking my kids fishing. And, you know, that's more, if, if you will, it keeps their rod, bending the rod and keeps them entertained and busy. So, yeah. therefore, I like to do it. July? Man, July, you can have it. I, I really... You know, your salmon fishing's really good at that time. Your perch fishing's really good at that time. You know, July can be really good, but I don't know. Um, late May, I pretty much fish myself out because I'm fishing from April all the way through May, right before Memorial Day. Again, I always go over to Devil's Lake because I've never been on a walleye bite like that, where you can go out and you can pet. Yeah, I mean... Like, for instance, last May, we were throwing chatterbaits with paddle tails in the reeds for walleyes and devil's like beating up on walleyes, big walleyes. I'm talking 27, 28, 29, 30-inch walleyes. But yet, you can also turn around and catch all the walleyes that you want under a slip bobber or a rocket bobber with the freaking leeches. But yet, if you have a wind day, you can go and catch all the white bass that you ever wanted in the shipping, you know, in the uh, in the little tunnels and canals and stuff by every bridge, bridge amateur. So it's just so July. I'm I'm pretty much worn out, you know. Yeah. August, August, man, you get start getting into late August in that skinny water, and you're running a lot of the the baits in the skinny water for king salmon and and big brown trout, and they have nowhere to go but out. So those reels are screaming. You're starting to see some 30-pound salmon, incredible fishing. September, those perch are back into the the river system for Mississippi River. So, you know, October, you're getting into that fall bite where the walleyes are starting to go crazy. The perch are going crazy. The 
the everything is putting their feed bag on for the winter. November, we're in the duck season. And I'm chasing ducks all over the place and still hitting the river a little bit. But, you know, and then you got your deer. So, you know, at that point, I'm picking up my bow and I'm sitting in some bull stands and, and chasing, uh, chasing Indiana deer around, chasing Wisconsin deer around, chasing all that stuff, and then you, you're in the, you know, in December, and December is early ice on the river, and, um, you know, then I'm chasing my panfish, and so, yes, 100%, I do have a favorite. Every month <laughs> is something different. Oh my God, dude. Hello, I'm Patrick. Have we met? <laughs> I like to ramble on. No, it's okay, though, but that gives people... Anybody get listening. bored with that yet? No, huh? no, no, but it gives people a good, good, um, overview of stuff that if they're interested in those kind of topics and those activities in those months, that's a good thing, Chase, or whatever, to reach out to you to put together a trip for. No. Well, I, I'm telling you, the state of Wisconsin is such a resource. Oh, yeah. No matter what you, I mean, you talk about every state and you talk about all these destinational places that you want to go. State of Wisconsin, man, you have every single opportunity. You know, if you're a deer hunter and you tell me that you have nowhere to hunt, call me. Oh, because yeah. Because there is so much state land in the state of Wisconsin between the Kettle Moraine and the lower Wisconsin and, you know, Blackhawk Lake and Governor. I mean, the endless opportunities that you have to chase not only deer, but squirrels and rabbits and pheasants and, and, you know, and, 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 and it, it's an exciting state we, to be in. Even, even yeah. Bobcat, it takes you two years to pull a Bobcat tag. I did <laughs> it last year. You had never, five years ago, you would have been like, where do I go to the Bob, Bobcat hunt? <laughs> right. But they're everywhere. I know. You know, when Aaron and I first started dating, he told me that his ex-wife and his ex the girl from before me, both of them wanted to move outside of Wisconsin because they hated Wisconsin so much. And they thought it was just a shitty state to live in. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, we almost moved to Texas and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, Texas is fine and all, but sweetheart, let me show you the wonders of Wisconsin. And now he's a super fan. (laughs) We're so rich in resources. It's crazy. The endless opportunities, no matter what you want to do, You know, and not only hunting and fishing. Now, that's what we're talking about right now. But you start getting out of that and, you know, you pull up on the apps of geocaching or even going metal, you know, metal detecting or just to see the state of Wisconsin from a different perspective is something special of its own. Yeah, right. Agreed. You know, between the camping. Yeah, between the camping and uh, it just it's. It's mind boggling, you know. You can you can take off and canoe the Brewer River. Or you can go up to the Chippewa Flowage and camp on the islands, or you can go over to. I mean, it, it, the the opportunities are endless. You just need to get out of your box and do a little bit of research, and you can find anything that you want to do wherever you want to do it. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. We have so okay. So you do stuff with kids too. Tell me, tell me about that whole thing because I don't have kids, so I don't pay attention to a lot of kid stuff. So <laughs> I, uh, I know you do yeah. a lot of stuff with that. Yeah, well you here. I'm gonna yell at you a little bit. You don't I have know. to have kids to find a kid that's standing around on the corner playing a video game and saying, "Get off that damn thing and let's go." I know, you know? but I know. You know. So I'm not here to give you a lecture. I'm here to talk about kids <laughs> and oh. As a as a person that has a gaggle himself, I mean, I got five kids, three grandkids, and they keep me busy enough, let alone every one of them have friends that, you know, they met through all the sports between wrestling and football and baseball and track and this and that and everything else. And having having that opportunity to get to know all these different kids and the opportunities that they've had throughout their lifetime uh, some are fortunate enough to be able to be introduced to the outdoors and others have not had the opportunity. Their opportunity is to here. I'm busy sitting in the corner and play this video game while I get done with this, you know, with this piece of work. And, you know, 
When it came down to it a couple of years ago, I started to stick them kids outdoors after I got hacked and I lost all my pictures of my kids and memories and all that on my own Facebook page. So I, I created a group to kind of document everything that I was doing with my kids in case something ever happened to myself that my kids could reflect on that and say, this was really cool that I went and did this with my dad here and there. And I went there here and there with my mom and all this other stuff. Well, that kind of took off because after that, people started seeing the stories and the, they started sharing their own adventures of skipping rocks, you know, going down into the camping and sharing their camping outings at different national parks throughout the United States or, you know, skipping their first rock or going to harvest their first deer or catching their first sturgeon or it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's outdoors. I mean, the, one of the coolest things that I did was I went park hopping over by Prairie du Chien and I had zero intention of doing that until we went to the first park for a birthday or birthday party with my kids just going to different playgrounds throughout a couple of different cities. So what we'll do is we'll just take the day and we'll, we'll hit different playgrounds all over. And all of a sudden one of the kids found a kindness rock that somebody left. Aww. And, That's nice. and all that was, all that was, was passed on the kindness, you know, right. so this, this rock that was glazed and painted and uh, on the backside of it, was, there was a saying. And also the next kid found one and the next kid found one. Now we had a mission of going to every one of these parks. So every one of our kids found one before we were done. And we had, you know, eight kids or 10 kids along that day or whatever. So we spent the entire day scrounging through and having a scavenger hunt for these kindness rocks. And sure enough, every one of the kids found one. So all of a sudden it kind of got these kids saying, well, we're going to start doing this on our own and we're going to leave, we're going to make our own rocks and leave them in different places. So these other kids, it, it, it's almost like, a, you know, going back to the geocaching or going back yeah. to the metal detecting or going back to the hunting or fishing or whatever. It has nothing to do with the hunting or fishing aspect. It has everything to do with getting these kids outside going out, getting some sunshine, wearing them out so they sleep at night and they don't annoy the living hell out of you while you're trying to relax at the end of the day, you know? Right. Um, it, it's just something cool. And now all of a sudden it started, you know, and there's so many different take a kid fishing and take a kid mm -hmm. outdoors and take this in. It, it's just awesome, you know? But I don't know. It, it's just something that I believe in because – my dad was busy as a game warden. He was constantly, um, when he was not available to take me hunting or fishing, but yet I had such a passion for it. And everybody knew that I, I didn't have the attention span of sitting around and playing video games. So the neighbors started coming over and Jack Shealy's of this world came over and threw me in a canoe down on Yetzer's Lake and we went fishing or, you know, the Dave Nets that came over and got me and we went to Winnicani walleye fishing during the spring run or the, you know, Jared Calmertons of the world that came and got me out of school to go duck hunting on a sunny afternoon and we would never see a duck on the Sheboygan Marsh, but we yeah. went. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, the kids that took me camping or this or that. I did a lot of things with my parents, don't get me wrong, but there were these other people, even though they knew how much I already did in the outdoors, either they were taking me because they wanted to learn and they secretly wanted to pick my brain, but it worked. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, I had, I had teachers calling me in saying, Oh, you know, we have to talk about this assignment. So I'd go in early and, you know, Mike Schrader was one of them that I'd go in there to talk about an assignment. And the only assignment that he had on his table was his tackle box, wondering what he needed to run during cohort derby with the weekend coming up. Yeah. You know, so it, it's, uh, you know, the Jeff Dilke teacher of my tech teacher in Howard's Grove would bring his tackle box in and we would, again, go through his tackle box and figure out what was working out on the lake. So that weekend when he was taking his kids fishing, he was starting with a program that was successful. You know, that does bring up a good point. The, if... Like, I don't have kids, right? So if I wanted to do mentorship or something, and I always wish before my dad passed away that he would have done a little more of the mentorship programs that Wisconsin has. We have some incredible programs here in Wisconsin and groups. I just did an interview with Nevin's Hunting Friends, and it's 
It was this eight-year-old special needs kid who kind of started a group that blossomed into this whole thing. But they're in Pennsylvania. And when I asked if they had mentorship programs or take a kid fishing type stuff, and they were like, not really. And I was like, man, because we have a ton. And Mm -hmm. I just think that's awesome. And I think what you're doing is great because I just don't have the energy for it. Like, I spend 20 minutes with my nephews, and I'm like, that's enough. So, <laughs> I, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It is very taxing. It is very draining. It is, but yet, at the end of the day, there's just a fulfillment yeah. within itself that you cannot replace. You know, I mean, you talk about the, like the state of Wisconsin right now has R three program, and mm-hmm. you know the outdoor heritage is uh, it has evolved in the outdoor mentor program and pass it on and all of these different programs to introduce people to not only the hunting and fishing aspect, but the trap shooting and the trapping. And uh, no matter what it is, if you are fully invested in learning, you're going to be able to find somebody that in most of the time, it's going to be 100% free to you to go and try it, go to, go to find out, you know, you have, the MPAA coming out of, you know, all the professional walleye trails and the NWTs and all that, you go and, they, you know, the day after the tournament, they have these kids programs that they give you fishing rods and lures and all. I mean, the opportunity is there. You just got to search for it. You got to find it. And once you find it, maybe that maybe that's all it's going to take to light the candle within that, you know, the glass jar of your eternal self to find out, man, I really do have a passion for this. I really do have a desire for this. And it's, it's something special. Yeah. You know, and I, it's funny because I, even on Sunday morning, as I found myself again, you know, sometimes I feel bad because I don't go to church and that that's not my church. My church is that Oak tree in the middle of the field or the ripple. I, you know, I, I, that's where I belong. I, I'm uneasy. I'm uncomfortable. Not that I don't agree with those that go to church, but my church is the outdoors. That oak tree in the middle of that field that, you know, started from a seed and needed to be watered and nurtured and wind blown and everything else and the changing of the colors. And there is no, you know, there's, there's something about that that is rejuvenating to me. And I need that in my life. Yeah, I agree. So with the, so we're actually recording this the first couple of days of October, just for the timestamp for folks, because this isn't even going to air for like another three weeks, I think. Um, So do you have any thoughts about the October lull? I don't hunt a lot in October because I genuinely don't see a lot and I'd prefer to just fish and they go to Door County and stuff in October. But come November, I hit it hard. But do you believe in the October lull? What are your thoughts on that? So October, you're patterning. You know, you're you're hunting a pattern. You're not hunting the rut. So are you talking, I'm assuming that you're talking deer hunting, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have specified. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's fine. Because, you know, here, once you start getting in early October, you know, in southern Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, your waterfall season start and everything else, and you can you can hit it hard for your local birds that were nesting and ponding and, and, you know, your resident birds and all that other stuff before you educate them. So you have that window of about a week that you can really get after it. And then all of a sudden, you know, Wisconsin has a split season for the waterfall season. So on a sunny day, uh, it's not big. You know, I run on a lot of spy points, so I have I have seven cameras running every single day, and I'm looking at them every single day. And you know, matter of fact, this morning is when I finally started to see some bucks on hoof again. So it's one of them where early in the in the September, it was a patterning thing where I could tell you between this time and this time, I have bucks that are starting to move, some smaller bucks I have the hemp ropes that are hanging for them to go up and sniff and kind of start playing. Uh, I, on camera, I have them starting to make some rubs and some scrapes and stuff like that. They're just starting to mark their territory. Now all of a sudden you get into October and you got your fishing that's really heating up. Your fall food bag is starting to go. 
some people are, you know, right now, like you said, it's 80 some degrees in Southern Wisconsin. I'm not going to go sit in a damn tree stand. It's not going to happen. I got other things to do. I got all my patio stuff to be put away. I got my duck decoys to be, you know, the, once we start getting into late October and your fall migration, as far as that North wind, you know, I start watching that weather pattern. And when I see a, a strong west or northwest wind or even northwest i'm i'm gonna start getting ready and i'm gonna be in that marsh two days before that wind is to hit because those birds are always going to be in front of the wind if that wind is already here you're already too late for that same thing with deer deer are going to start moving two or three days before that front really starts which makes sense because Last night, I finally started seeing some good bucks on camera again, and I credit a lot to that spy point where it comes right to my phone. I wake up in the morning, and first thing I do is I grab my phone, start seeing what's moving. Well, lo and behold, it's 85 degrees, but they're talking down into the 50s the next two days. Coincidence? No. It's a pattern. It's the same thing as every other time. It's kind of like watching deer. Right now, until that rut starts, you're not going to go out and sit in the in a tree stand at noon because it's totally pointless. Once that that switch hits and those deer start rutting and they start running and you know you never know what time of the day that that buck that's uh, is horny and he's running around, he's bumping them does, and them does are now running around, which makes the bucks run around. That time from nine to noon makes sense. Right now. All you're going to do is out there is catch a sunshine, uh, maybe a burn on your face, and that's it. Yep. You know, uh, go squirrel hunting. You know, you go figure out something to do at this time of year. You know, it's just the th- there's things that you, you. Oh yeah, yeah. Your your that's bluegills crazy. are starting to stage. You know, between that eight to twelve foot water, your perch are running on the river systems. Your walleyes are starting to put the feed bag on on the wing dams and below the dams. Your pike are starting to really feed pretty good. Exactly it. Right now is the time to go fishing. Right now is the time to get all your chores done. So when hunting season does come around, you're ready to rock and roll. Go sight your your bow in. Go you know make sure that you spend the time to be prepared. So when it is that time that you make that ethical shot make sure that not only is your time well spent, but you're not putting a bad, I should say a bad shot because bad shots do happen no matter what you may, you know, ricochet off a branch that you don't see, whatever the case may be, but make sure that you spend the time to give that animal all the respect in the world. And to be able to give that animal all the respect in the world is to make sure that you're prepared. You study for a test all the way through in grade school and high school, and you study for work seminars and everything else for that time that it's to, to succeed. You're prepared. Make sure that you do that with an animal, that you're not going out there, make an unethical shot because you are ill-prepared. 100%. Couldn't agree more. I just, I don't know. So many people are like, oh, what do you mean you don't sit out in October? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'm like, nope. November 1st is really when I get real serious. And then I hunt the rut. And then it's rifle season. And then December is just kind of, you know, the holiday hunts and the doe only weekends and stuff. And it's really just November and December. I I always like to go bow hunting in September. But, um, yeah, the Aglow Conference kind of screws that up every year. So... <laughs> you know, and, and here, here's the thing about September is going back to the cameras. Um, if you religiously pattern your deer, one of the most thrilling hunts I've ever had was taking my turkey pack mm-hmm. and my ghillie suit and sitting in the middle of a bean field, sweating my bejesus off because it was freaking 80 degrees in September, <laughs> right. bow hunting late September, and it was amazing hunt because I knew exactly what those deer were going to do. Yeah, totally. They are way, they're again, way more alert, but so they're still in those summer patterns. And But then again, I was done for the rest of the fall, so I sat there all fall going, now what do I do? <laughs> 
Yeah, I suppose that's. I don't know. I just I always look forward to the opening weekend, but the last couple of years, I don't know. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but it's not like opening yeah. weekend of rifle season, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well wait, wait. Big difference there. Opening week of rifle season. I mean, that, that's just something instilled in your blood from the, right. the get go. I think. I mean, that there is. I mean, I stopped going up to the cabin here uh, probably about 20 years ago because of the lack of deer. And about five years ago, I started taking my kids back up there because there's just some. The biggest thing that I miss about this online registration, about this all. I don't care who you are, what you are, whatever it is. Somebody that has a bar, somebody that has a bar or a restaurant or something out there. I don't know how the hell you're going to do it, but please bring Dear back your tradition. Yes. <laughs> bring back the the going out and looking at the bucks and having the kids excited and right? and playing pool while dad or mom or uncle or grandpa has a beer at the bar have your buck pools damn it bring I back know. the registration of the tradition of everybody sitting around telling their stories you, you took that away from us and you I took think... it away from us and now everybody is afraid to go back to it and i do I don't, I, I don't give a I might just do it out of my garage. Piss on it. We'll do a fake registration out of my garage and say, <laughs> right? Come on. Come have some beers. Sit around the fire. We are, we, yeah, we are going to be open for business for every story to be told about that one that outsmarted you. And, oh, it was the biggest damn deer I've ever seen in my life. And oh. I screwed it up. It it has a lot to do with why we are, you know, they talk about hunter retention and stuff like that. Well, they've completely eliminated the socialization of the hunt and of opening weekend because some of my favorite memories are from when I was a kid. I'm sure every, I'm sure everyone listening to this who's ever been to a Wisconsin rifle or even Michigan or wherever opening weekend where you had to take it to a bar or to a gas station to check it in has memories from when they were kids and that was a big part of, well, of course we're going deer hunting. Why wouldn't we? Not, oh, well, I'll leave the kids home because they can play video games while I go deer hunt because I don't, you know, it's so much easier. I'll just run out for a couple hours, and if I get one, I'll run back home and, and register it online. There's yeah. it's, there's so much of the tradition that's missing. And when they come and they start talking about hunter retention, that is one of the number one ways to get people excited and get kids excited and man, I can't wait till I can go hunting. Cause look at that buck and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, I don't know how, I don't know how we do it. And I don't know how I'm going to piss anybody and everybody off of this statement, but boycott quick trip one weekend of the year. <laughs> and have your ass stop at the local bar when you're going to go deer to deer camp yeah. and get that burger and that beer and sign up for the buck pool. I know. Stop right? grabbing your damn burger as you're driving through because you're in such a damn hurry. I know. Stop. I get it. I get it. I just it, it, it's frustrating. I don't know how. I don't know how to change it. I don't know how to bring that tradition back. Uh, there, there's some people who are like, oh yeah, we're opening. We're open for deer season. Where's your buck pool? Where's your mm -hmm. Where's your buck pool? Yep. Right. Stop coddling everybody in this world and, and being afraid of showing your damn prized possession of, of the buck that you harvested. Stop. Open your tailgates and let people see it again. I know. I get it. 100% with you. And I I feel like probably 80% of the people in the state are probably with you. But it's that small, unfortunate couple percent that's screwing it up for the rest of us. I know. But that's a that's a rant. That's a sit around and have beers and rant for an hour about <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah i just i i want oh. i don't know i, I want to get i i want to get back and that's where like last year was the first year matter of fact the second weekend of deer camp i started the second weekend of deer camp and anybody that's listening to this i don't know if anybody that, so jason schwartz who used to run the pelican lake ice fishing tournament up in uh Anago, Wisconsin. He started coming down to the second week of the deer camp. And, you know, then uh, Robert Woods comes up from Holly Springs, Mississippi, who owns thousands of acres down there. He comes up to Wisconsin for the second week of the deer camp. 
Glenn Wheeler, for, he's a sheriff in Newton County, Arkansas, met him through Seopa. He is now coming to the second week of deer camp. And, you know, I mean, Jeff Davis from Whitetail Unlimited. I mean, it, it, we started a second week of deer camp, and it is a cabin at Black Hawk Lake. And we do nothing but hunt public ground and go fishing in the afternoon. And who gives a shit? We're second week of deer camp. Hey, how it's do I get an invite? That sounds amazing. It's the second week of deer camp, and all the boys are here. <laughs> what? I said, how do I get an invite? That sounds amazing. Hey, there's extra cabins. <laughs> this year, we will start another cabin on the second Hell week yeah. of deer camp. Let's do it. Hey, I'm telling you what, there's cabins to be rented, oh and God. it's uh, everybody brings a dish to pass, and mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I don't give a shit who you are, but Robert Woods and that home home cook frickin' pecan pie that he brings up from Mississippi. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit balls. That's I mean, awesome. He had to start bringing another one up just for the family Thanksgiving because my in laws stole the damn pie the first year. <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh, man. Oh, now I got to start making them teach me how to make some of them damn hush puppies they got going down there. Really? They just make them different. I don't know what they got going on. Oh, my God. Hilarious. They're still not that good if Joe Raybach asks. It's not good. <laughs> okay. I will tell you. Don't, don't you ever tell her that I like the hush puppy. I promise your secret is safe with me and all of the listeners that listen yeah, to the well, show. Yeah, well, don't tell her. All right. I, I had a good hush puppy. Too funny. None of that shit that she had me try, though. That's funny. All right. Hey, well, we listen. are bumping up against time here. So why don't you tell the listeners? People have clear their schedules. Oh, my God. We got more time. Oh, my God. They'll continue to listen. <laughs> All right, fine. No, because I'm going to have you on in just a couple of months, and then people will get the second dose of Pat Kilmerton, and they will be looking forward to it, breathlessly waiting for that next episode. Yeah, they're, they're looking forward to what direction is he going this time, because <laughs> we had no idea. I know. This was just kind of a catch-up, kind of a just, I don't know, let's kick it off. We're going to have Pat on like once a quarter at least, and I promise you we'll be a little more focused, but this is just fun to chat about random stuff. So why don't unless, you tell Unless we see a squirrel as I'm yeah. driving, then, <laughs> then you got this. And then you'll be like, yeah, we were supposed to talk salmon. Oh, yeah. Well, let's talk about squirrel hunting instead. Yeah, oh we'll God. talk about something. You never know. Hilarious. I got a new... Uh, my lab sent in a new metal detector. Maybe we'll talk about all my treasure. Oh, did you man, win that? Oh, did man. you win that at a glow? Did you win it? No, we're oh. uh, you know I did not win that one. I I uh, I bought a damn fisher rod like I needed that, and then I bought a twenty two like I needed that, and then my wife. Do not tell my wife. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> okay. She was just yelling at me yesterday. Matter of fact, she's like. Open up your card and let me so let me see what the hell you're spending your money on. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't to, to my defense. It was not my fault. All yeah, in Brandy, they were that they were that little they were that demon in my ear that was yelling at me saying, "You can do it. Buy something. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun, don't you know?" It wasn't very fun though. I just I just bought. I actually I just called uh I just called this morning finding out where my my invoice was for the dang thing and apparently they sent it to me. <laughs> oh my god. Whoops. I got that paid up. <laughs> A little late, but we got her. Hilarious. You know, um Brett just posted on the Association of Great Lakes Outdoor Writers Facebook page um thirty minutes ago. Thanks to everyone who donated her bid on items for the record auction event at this year's conference. You know, I we should, well, I have a, quite a few people from Aglow coming on in the next few weeks, but man, if you are an outdoor communicator, videographer, photographer, blogger, podcast, video, just freaking social media influencer that does outdoor stuff, if you don't, aren't a member of Association of Great Lakes Outdoor Writers, you are missing out for real. Yeah, if you, it's not any fun. So actually, if you're a bump on a log, don't do it oh because God. we don't, you know, if you don't have a passion for talking the outdoors or if you don't have a passion about communicating the outdoors or if you're kind of like, 
you know, don't like to talk to people or don't like to have a beer at night or don't like to eat good food or eat good destinations or anything, seriously, don't sign up. But we we have – did you – oh, did you see my duck that I found? Oh, God, no, so did you amazing. post it online? Wait. Well, yeah. Dude. Yeah, I found it at the treasure hunt place while I was exploring Bemidji. Huh. It was no, amazing. Oh it was amazing. God. Yeah. Go to the photo dump, uh, uh, maybe two. Photo dump two, maybe. Okay. Go to Pat Kilmerton page or Pat Kilmerton outdoor page. Okay. Or I, I shared it to the Glow page, too. Oh, I'll have to check it out. I'm so far behind, it's not even funny. I can't believe you didn't see that. I, my, uh, actually, I think you're on there, too, from our fishing okay. adventures. Oh, my God. Yeah. Great. <laughs> it was so hot that day. I probably looked like a sweaty mess. Oh, my God. I think I passed out in the front of the boat because of from heat exhaustion. <laughs> I have the video of me falling so in bad. front of the boat and almost drowning. Yeah, well, <laughs> you'll have that. That's right. Your front of your boat didn't have the, the center in there. You know, when you get in a bunch of days, to my defense, I did more of a fucking roll than a fall. You were, I mean, you were like an elegant ballet dancer. Yeah, or something you. like that. Kung Fu Panda and... <laughs> I mean, I a spider monkey, elegant ballet dancer, and kung fu panda all wrapped into one. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, my God. All right. Well, tell listeners where they can find more about you. Facebook, uh, Oh, websites. boy. Yeah. I know. Probably the Hard easiest questions. way is just Google Pat Yalmerton or go to the uh, Pat Yalmerton Facebook or Pat Yalmerton Outdoors Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or just Google Pat Yalmerton. That might pop up. I don't know. I'd be... I don't know. You can go Wolfpack Adventures. You can go to Take Them Kids Outdoors. You can, you'll find me maybe on the corner of some street. If, you know, Mama throws me out. You'll find me somewhere. Oh, I'll be around God. somewhere. Well, I will post these. I'll post Middle these. Middle of a field chasing a my... rabbit around. Oh, <laughs> if I see a pheasant somewhere, maybe a squirrel. This is the interview know. that I'll never end. I, I I get lost sometimes. I thought you had to go. <laughs> I do have to go. Um, all right. All, all, be joking, gone. all joking aside, I will post all the stuff in the show notes of the episode, and I will post this up in just a couple of weeks, and I will tag you, and then the listeners will laugh as much as I do because you are always a fun, fun interview, fun to talk to. I appreciate your time. Yeah. I got to go. I got right. things to do. Okay. Talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, love you a long time. Bye. Bye.